Hi everyone, coming to you from my uh, couch today because it's uh, it's one of those days. Uh, anyway, we are going to be talking about putting the actual API ness uh, API universe into our uh, GraphQL uh, server, right? Because beforehand we were able to output stuff to the um, command line. But let's say that we wanted to hit this uh, service via um, an API, like something like Postman, or we have another API that, that's hitting it. Uh, I'm not going to cover security in, in this one because that's actually something I'm still kind of learning about when it comes to Go and how a lot of people implement that kind of stuff. So this is not going to be a security one, but I am going to be talking about um, GorillaMux, uh, which is a really, really great uh, service. Um, and some other kind of interesting things uh, that I think will probably be a little bit helpful for you. So the first thing that I did was I took everything that was in main, right? Because we had all of our uh, GraphQL handlers and on all that kind of stuff that was just in our, our main. So what I did was I literally cut and pasted that into um, a GQL handler .go file. So it's essentially functionalized. So now instead of having a main, now we have that uh, function uh, get weather, um, and it takes uh, a response, uh, an HTTP dot response writer, and it also has a pointer to an HTTP uh, request. You'll see that a lot in Gorilla Mux for any time that you're you have a a function that's handling a path, and I mean that's just boilerplate. That that's literally how it works. You have a response and you have a request, right? So yeah, if you just go through this, you'll see it. I mean, it's basically the same. Um, there's nothing really crazy here. The only thing that I, I did change was I take the JSON that is generated from our query and I toss that onto response. So this JSON new encoder uh, encodes R, the uh, response that we get from the GraphQL.do on line 52 here, and it encodes it onto that um, response that's passed into this function here, so this response writer. Um, that, uh, it's it's literally a direct cut and paste from uh, from main. Okay, so here that you see we have a, a completely 100% blank main, and it's from this that we're going to be constructing our uh, HTTP uh, REST API uh, server. And we're going to do that via something called um, Gorilla Mux. So what Gorilla Mux is, it's um, right there in the title, a powerful HTTP router and URL matcher for building uh, Go web servers. Uh, basically, what I'm going to be showing you here is kind of their sort of basic uh, tutorial, their their basic way of doing things, adding a, a thing or two um, here and there. But uh, really, uh, if you ever need to do any kind of uh, REST endpoints, HTTP handling, um, URL matching, like that Gorilla Mux is kind of considered like production standard within kind of the Go community. So the first thing that I'm going to do, um, this is something that you want to do with any uh, service uh, that's serving over a port. Uh, you want to create some kind of um, port for this thing to run on, right? Our port string. Then we're going to import um, flag, uh, go import flag. And just flag's just going to allow us to um, parse a command line argument when we get this thing started. And uh, you can set it to default. You can set it to whatever you want. I'm going to set mine to 8080. So flag dot, oops, string var. So string var. Uh, takes a pointer to a string, uh, name string, value string, and a usage usage string. So it's um, and uh, address of port port, um, which is the name. We're going to give it a default value of eighty eighty. And we're just going to call it the master master port. Cool. And then we're going to just say port is equal to 
colon plus uh, colon plus port. And that's going to give us you know, colon plus whatever we pass along. Typically, it's just going to be 8080. That's uh, pretty much a standard port for running like test services on your uh, machine. Okay, why is it complaining? Oh, flag dot string. Flag dot string var. My bad. That's what we want. Cool. So, okay. Now that we've done that, we're gonna want to import uh, Grillamux. Now we're gonna start doing doing some routing. So we're gonna say um, go import github.com slash gorilla slash mux. So we're gonna say um, router is equal to mux dot router. Cool. I'm gonna say mux dot new router. Duh. Cool. And then router dot handle funk. So then we're gonna give it a path. So here we're just gonna say slash weather. And then we're gonna give it a function to handle, right? Which, um, which if we look at GQL handler, uh, the name of the function is get weather, right? So in here we're gonna say get weather, what, weather, and we're also going to give it um, a method. So what is that method? Well, it's when you do an HTTP request, HTTP request, right, on a REST API, you have a get, push, or post, or, or whatever. Um, we're just going to say get. Um, so, okay, then we're also gonna create a structure. We're gonna call it just SRV for server. And we're gonna say, um, and this is just to kind of make our lives a little easier. We're gonna have it point to um, HTTP.server. And that's a struct. So then we're gonna say ADDR colon port, the address of the port we're handling, and then the handler um, associated with it. We're just going to assign that to router. One of the things that I don't think um, is talked about enough in Go is how to gracefully shut things down. Um, we don't want to leave dangling processes. We don't want to leave dangling ports, um, all that kind of junk. So we need to give it some kind of signal saying, hey, we want to kill this server right now, right? So what we're going to, um, because the way that these we're going to handle this is we're going to have a go function or go routine that is going to be like running in the background. So if if we had like you know thousands of people hitting our API at the same time, each one of those would be handled by an individual go routine, which is good, right? You want those things to run in parallel. They don't need to know about each other, so to speak. So that's what you would you you would want that. So we're going to say uh, done. And we're going to make a channel. And that channel is going to be of type os.signal, right? And we're going to give it one. Cool. And then we're going to say um, signal dot uh, notify. Go slash signal, I believe. signal notify and we're going to say done on that one and what it's going to be listening for is OS interrupt we're going to also say um, uh, it's going to take a syscall uh, sigint And it's also going to take a syscall um, sig term, right? So those are the signals that it's going to be listening for. It's providing an OS interrupt. 
and it's going to send all of those over like done, right? Cool. Why is it complaining? Oh, I need to import syscall. Go import syscall. Cool. All right. So now we're going to instantiate a an anonymous go routine. What is an anonymous go routine? Well, an anonymous go routine is just like it sounds like. I mean, it's I a go routine is just a specific type of function. Go allows you to do anonymous functions just like any other language, right? But it also you can you can add the go keyword in front of it to make them all run concurrently. So it's just go func. Go func. Right, and then we're gonna say uh, within this go function, um, we're gonna sign error if error uh, is equal to SRV dot listen and serve. Right, um, this is a declaration. So go allows you to do, allows you to do in a conditional a, a declaration in addition to checking that declaration. So here we're saying listen and serve, assign it to error. If error is equal to not nil, if error doesn't equal nil, and and uh, error doesn't equal um, HTTP dot uh, error server closed, yeah, cool. And then we're gonna say log dot. We got it log, log.fatalf, say listen, uh, mod s, new line, error. Um, yeah, I think that should work. I'm not sure why that's throwing an error right now, but we can we can come back to that. That's not really a, a big deal. And we're gonna also just say log dot print um, server started. Cool. And then we're gonna check and see if we are done, right? So here we're gonna say do this channel. Check this channel if done, right? So it's just gonna be kind of iterating through this chunk up until done signal is sent, right? And then after the done signal is sent, we're gonna say log.print server stopped. And this is when we're going to kind of get into the um, context and graceful shutdowns, right? So. We want to have a uh, context and a cancel uh, context dot uh, with timeout just in case. Uh, with the timeout, we're going to say uh, context dot background, and then we're going to get a, a limit of like ten seconds. Okay. Um, defer the cancel. Um, always defer, because otherwise, go routines, the function calling the go routine uh, can execute and close before the go routine itself is executed. So always use that defer. Here's where we're getting into the um, making sure that we're shutting down uh, gracefully. So if error uh, SRV dot shutdown, and we're gonna provide that context, error doesn't equal nil, log dot fatal F, and we're gonna say server shutdown failed for some reason. Uh, mod plus V, because we want it to be very expressive. New line. 
error. Cool. And if all that happened, that's all good. Then we're going to say log.printf. And it's just, you know, server log.print line. Excuse me. Uh, server shut down gracefully. Oop. That was a mistake. Ooh, we got to import time. Go import time. Oh, this is where I went wrong. This is why. Because Go is seeing this as two different types, right? One of them is just an error, and one of them is like a functional error. So that's why it was complaining. Cool. OK. Um, that should work, I believe. Yeah. Cool. Server has started. Let's bring up Postman. And let's see if we can get weather. Hey, what do you know? We've gotten our weather now. So we actually have a functioning API mask layer, whatever you want to call it. So I have my service out here that's Postman. It's reaching into this HTTP server that's running on my machine. I have no idea the backend work that is being done on GraphQL's end, let's say, if I'm just hitting this service. I have no idea how all of that's being handled, how the services are going out and getting that information. And frankly, I don't care. Why should I care? All I know is that for my API, the only three things that I want returned are humidity and the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature. I don't need to know about all that stuff, so I can just treat it as a black box API mask, and the people who work on that gateway and work on those sort of backend services can manage all of that for me. What makes this great is, let's say that I have a front end. Front ends are naturally fragile things. Front ends don't work all that well. Uh, they just don't. They're just fragile pieces of technology. And if I have a front end, I already have to deal with that fragility of it being a front end. I would really love to be able to say, you know what, I am never going to have to worry about getting the data I need to be represented in my front end. I'm going to have an entirely separate layer that deals with that data machinations. And that's all it's ever going to do. And that's what makes GraphQL really, really great. Uh, I'm going to put the link to the GitHub in my profile uh, so you can kind of go and see uh, what I did here and, and how that works. There's also a lot more comments in there that I input just for the sake of uh, making things a little more clear. But yeah, that's how you add that sort of API layerness, API-ness to uh, your GraphQL server and making a true, 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 true end-to-end -end API mask. Thanks and have a good day.